Israel is at war with Hamas, striking at the terror organization for what officials are calling a savage attack on Israeli civilians over the weekend. The combined death toll on both sides now at more than 1,000, with nine Americans among those killed. Skylar Henry reports from Washington. Smoke rose above the Gaza City skyline Monday after repeated Israeli airstrikes, hitting more than 800 targets in Gaza so far. The numbers of dead and wounded continuing to climb. The vengeance follows Saturday's unprecedented surprise attack on Israel from the Hamas terror organization. Hamas broke through the barrier Israel uses to contain Palestinians inside Gaza and unleashed fury by land, sea and air before gunmen went on a rampage slaughtering hundreds of civilians and kidnapping more than 100 people. It seems like Israel had no clue. Former Israeli intelligence officer Konan Ben Itzak tells CBS News Israel was caught off guard and he expects Hamas will use hostages as leverage to negotiate. Hostages like Noah Argamani, hauled away screaming on the back of a motorbike. Her distraught father says he wants the government to get her back only by peaceful measures. Here on Capitol Hill, House lawmakers are in a holding pattern with that speaker vacancy. Any additional aid to Israel would require congressional approval, which could be complicated without a speaker. The United States stands with the state of Israel. The USS Gerald Ford Carrier Strike Group is on the way to the region, and the Pentagon is working to move weapons to Tel Aviv as questions swirl about Iran's direct or indirect involvement. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces are saying the same thing. Uh, broad complicity for Iran, uh, no sign of any uh, immediate direction, uh, although this is obviously something that we're going to continue to watch very closely. The U.S. is also working to confirm if any Americans are among those being held captive. Well, the State Department issued travel advisories for the region over safety concerns.